And uh, to discuss the situation, we have with us Alexander Hara, who is the expert of the Maidan of the Foreign Affairs. This is an organization which is keeping a track on anything which is happening also with Crimea and uh, with the breach of the international uh, legislation regarding the Crimea. So we're discussing this uh, de facto blockade of the SOC. So what are the recent developments? What are the most urgent things people need to know besides well, what uh, we just First of all, watched? I should say that we, it's not an isolated uh, incident. It's uh, just uh, unfolding aggression uh, that we've seen in Crimea in 2014 and then in Donbass. So uh, Russians are connecting to uh, uh, theaters of war in Donbass and Crimea by uh, blockading, by making this blockade of, of uh, uh, Ukrainian Azov sea ports and uh, the stopping the vessels, international vessels, uh, shipping to and from uh, Ukrainian cities uh, goods. So, so far we have uh, almost 60 vessels being stopped and searched uh, by the FSB, R Russian Security Service, on the ground that uh, they are preparing or counter-terrorism, uh, they are conducting counter-terrorism uh, operations. Uh, uh, and the uh, everything began with the, you know, actually with the uh, building of the illegal building of the bridge uh, via the Kerr Strait. Uh, from that time, uh, they were stopping uh, stopping vessels. They were uh, closing the sea for any movements. Uh, in uh, the, actually, the blockade began in April 2015. It caused a huge damage to the ports of Mariupol. Uh, the, the turnover dropped 15 uh, percent, and to Berdansk, almost one third. So uh, the, the uh, idea of the Russians is just to um, threaten the international um, businesses uh, from shipping goods to Ukraine and from Ukraine uh, in Azov Sea ports. I would like probably to also show that because we have this map prepared. So this, those are the Ukrainian ports and, you know, the annexed Crimea, the very um, thin line and obviously this is Russia, yes, yeah, so all the Ukrainian vessels have to come through this and now we do have the bridge so really how did the bridge change the situation we showed that it didn't let the uh, bigger vessels to come well, through. Yes, Panamax uh, vessels are un unable to uh, pass the Kerch Strait uh, because of their heights and because of their dead weight. It's up to 15 meters uh, short, uh, I mean the bridge short, then uh, Panamax uh, is capable of uh, passing through it. Uh, so uh, the Russians uh, made it deliberately. Uh, from one hand, the Kerch Strait is eight meter deep, and it means that uh, not all the vessels, Panamax vessels, could pass uh, the strait uh, in general. But uh, if it's half uh, half loaded, it's possible to to pass the strait and then to load in Mariupol and uh, and Berdyansk. So one of the theses is that Russia can use also this uh, as some kind of a blackmail of Ukraine, for instance, to provide the um, Dnieper water to Crimea or any other things to let the Ukrainian vessels come. So really, can Russia, especially while keeping the Crimea annexed, still demand something from Ukraine? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, firstly, we should consider it as a, as a as next step of militarization of the region. Because we have 40,000 strong military in Crimea, we have uh, capable of uh, striking, nuclear, of nuclear strike uh, vessels in Crimea and other uh, military equipment. Now they are militarizing, militarizing uh, the Azov Sea. Uh, this is a ma major issue. Uh, via militarization, they are making uh, some uh, some difficulty to, to causing some difficulties for the uh, shipments because uh, the uh, east of Ukraine and especially Donetsk and uh, Mykolaiv re region depend on the ports of Mariupol and Berdyansk. It means that uh, there will be uh, economic damage to, 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 the, to these cities and to these regions. It means that the population would be not happy with that, demanding some action from the government in Kiev, and the uh, social and political situation would be destabilized. So it's not just about, about uh, the passage of the vessels, it's about undermining Ukrainian sovereignty, uh, military Militarizing the uh, both uh, thieves and then uh, unfolding aggression in other direction. Um, and how much uh, the Ukrainian government can do in this situation, and also what could be done on the international level? Because uh, you know there is a general understanding that there is not that much the international community also can do regarding anything connected to Crimea. Um, so far? Well, first and foremost, the uh, Russians uh, are those guys, uh, they, they, they respect uh, force. And that's why we, we need to uh, enforce, uh, to, to have um, uh, military uh, strength and time in the Navy. 
Uh, secondly, uh, there are several legal actions that they could make. Uh, firstly, we should uh, we, we should cancel the agreement as, as of 2003 that uh, is making possible from the legal point of view for the Russian military and uh, certainly uh, civil, civilian vessels to be in, on, on the uh, on the shore of, uh, of Ukraine. So we don't have a state border with Russia in Azov Sea, in, in Kerch Strait, in, and uh, beyond uh, in the Black Sea, I mean between um, mainland of Russia and Crimea. Uh, so we need to cancel this agreement. It will give us uh, uh, the, uh, the other framework, the uh, International um, uh, Sea Convention that uh, is uh, demanding the, um, the other, uh, other power to, uh, to request the, um, uh, the entrance uh, clearance uh, for 24 um, uh, nautical uh, miles. Now the Russians can, can, can be just offshore of, of Ukraine. A third one, uh, according to the information available, the Ukrainian uh, foreign ministry applied for the arbitrage for uh, high seas uh, and they, uh, they filed the case, uh, so we'll see some, some movement there. But certainly it will take time uh, to have this uh, court, this, not to the court, but the uh, arbitrary uh, decision. Um, uh, it, it can take a couple of years. Uh, what we've seen now, uh, the Russians uh, began with uh, they, they stopped uh, vessels for a couple of hours. Today, uh, the West, one of the Turkish vessels has been kept for three and a half days. So the Russians are increasing uh, these uh, tensions. They are just escalating the t situation because there was no uh, adequate response uh, from the military side, from the body, uh, bodyguards uh, of Ukraine. So thanks a lot. What is clear that uh, there should be more uh, said about this situation because it is developing and we'll follow this story. Thank you. That was uh, Alexander Hara, an expert of the Maidan for Foreign Affairs.